Who, who, who? I'm a hillbilly. Hi guys, just card Rob. So we wanted to see how I turned my dowel down. And holy monkey nuts is it cold out here. Wow. See my breath. Hoo hoo hoo. Okay. So anyway, what I do is I usually just take, uh, I got some of these vice grip clamp things here. And I uh, take a, this is a one by six. <sighs> one by six. So my books, one by six. And uh, you can see the router bit down in there. Okay. And this keeps the stick from wobbling around. And then I just usually uh, use two hands. One to turn the stick like this. And the other one to put down pressure on the stick. Uh, let's see if I can figure out how to get you guys set up. So I can turn this thing on and show you, okay? Hang on for a second. Okay, guys, that's about as good as I'm going to get it. So let me show you what, the, what I do. It's going to get noisy. That's it, guys. That's how we uh, turn it down. Then we just run over it with the sander to smooth out any of the little ripples that the, the blade might have left into it. So that's how we do her. All right. And uh, I'll sand this, and then we'll take it back into the shop. And I'll put that grid pattern on here, and I'll show you how we cut the dragon scales in. All right. So uh, let me check my picture. Yep, there we go. So that's how we do it right there. Okay. And uh, we'll cut some dragon scales in there and I'll show you the air tool and all that good stuff. I've had some questions on it, so uh, we'll get to it. So hang on while we go back to the shop. Doesn't matter. This is only an example. We're not doing the whole thing anyway. We're just going to do a couple squares and I'll show you how to, how to cut them. And then how to cut them with the knife. Because that's how I do it, is with a knife. Alright. So the first thing. This is a SN, SMC. Air tool. Okay. So this is our SMC air tool right here. High speed, 400,000 RPM. So fast you can't even see it spinning. All right. And the first thing we gotta do is I've been working on leaves on the other stick with this flame burr. Yep, they make flame burrs for these little guys too, guys. All right. So we're gonna change that out. We're gonna change out the flame burr. Oh, no, 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 no. With. Our pointy burr. Make sure we clean this. You got to make sure you keep these tips. These tips right here. Super clean. Okay. This is a 1.6 millimeter. So it's small. Okay. Okay. 
small, small, small. Okay. All right, looks like I'm in. See how fast you can move with this thing? Just like a pencil. Okay. Now I'm going in probably almost 3.30 seconds, just under an eighth, just over a sixteenth. Then we'll come back this way. Come on, Bob, you're using this as an example. Stop messing it up. Okay, I guess we'll do one more here. This is what I would call a story stick. It just basically gives you the idea of what's going on. Because we're not going to carve this whole thing. There's no reason to. Um, basically this stick, if I decide I want to carve something, that I haven't really done before. And it's on a uh, poplar. This is poplar, by the way. Uh, Carved really, really good. I like it. It's not as soft as basswood. Um, so it is a hardwood. Guys, yeah, it is a hardwood. Just in case anybody's wondering. Uh, this is poplar and it is a hardwood. I'll tell you guys, once you've had one of these tools, uh, you'll be wondering why you never ha never why you never looked at them before. Well, the main reason is probably because of the cost of them. This is not a cheap tool. Not by any stretch of the imagination is this a cheap tool. Put that out there. I bought this one about, about four or five years ago. And at that time, I think it was close to Four, just over four hundred dollars, five hundred dollars, something like that. So yeah, it's not it's not a cheap tool, guys. But the things it lets you do with wood, or uh, if you're into uh, scrimshaw on bone or glass. You like doing glass things, like taking wine bottles and turning them into fancy wine glasses. I tell you, this thing is it. Okay, so we got that out of the way. So you can see our same thing, cross hatch, pat cross hatch pattern. Okay, and this is pretty easy, guys. I usually start at the tip up here and just cut in. I don't know, am I in camera? Oh, I'm trying to be in camera for you. Uh, you can do this with a Dremel. You can cut these with a Dremel. I just like the, uh, the way they come out with a knife better. It keeps everything nice and sharp. Basically, you're going to start with a plunge in at the tip. Okay. 
and then you're going to put your knife down on a slight angle and you're going to cut back to that tip uh, the first one of these I ever cut out, I cut with a utility knife. With, you know, the razor knives. So you can see, it goes pretty quick. There, boom. One scale. Uh, I would say the most important thing about cutting these scales... Should be using a shorter knife is uh, the depth up there in the front you're gonna want to try keeping that about the same depth so that they look similar on the run through now you can have them deeper and shallower um, as long as they're close I've done this pattern quite a few times and I've never had anybody come back to me and say, oh, this one's deeper than that one. Well, it's made by hand, not machine. Not made by a machine, it's made by your, your own hands, you know. You gotta be very, very, very good to uh, produce something by hand that's perfect. I've never been able to do it. I even give up trying. Okay, so that's basically how you do it. You're just making that first plunge mark. Uh, bonus of the high speed air tool is that bit is so thin. It's uh, basically just about as wide as a knife blade, guys. So, you know. When I was doing gun stocks, that, that was my go-to tool. Great for outline and stuff that you want to cut in and have a good crisp line, like these scales here. And you can see, you can move right along doing this. You do not need it. You can do this. You can do this with just a razor knife. I have done it. Remember, you want your depth up in the front of it, and then you want it to come back almost to nothing where it meets the next diamond. And the more of them you do, the better they're going to get because you get that muscle memory going. Now, don't forget, I just got done carving like a million of these little diamonds in that walking stick. So, it's still fresh in my head. So, see how quick you can move right along once you get, the, get it down? Something like that. Okay, I think you guys got the idea by now, yeah. Okay. Um, I will do one more. Make sure I'm in camera, which I'm probably not. Okay, you're going to plunge in. It's that three-way chip cut. To give it the depth right there. Just going to take that chip out of there. Just like that. Okay. And then bring your knife back on that angle. It didn't go deep enough there with it. Thanks for the overwhelming response to the walking stick. I didn't think anybody would be interested in it. But, I guess some people are. So, if you want to see, I will show how I do things. There's no, no top secrets of carving around here at the Just Rob shop. 
just carve rock shop. It's uh, the bad thing about this doing these little dragon scales is that they're like potato chips. Once you've done one, you just want to keep doing them, or at least that's the way it is for me. I don't. I like using my knives because, uh, like when I'm out hunt, hunting or camping or whatever, fishing. I always got my, like I said, I always bring my carving kit with me. It's an old little tackle box. I keep a couple knives and in and a couple little V gouges. Uh, just so I can, well, I'm sitting on the bank fishing and the fish aren't biting, but I don't want to go home and do my yard work. I sit there in my lawn chair and, uh, I'll bring a piece of basswood with me or I'll find a stick laying up on the bank and I'll carve it. I might carve a wizard face or something into it and then I'll leave it there and some little kid will come along and think they discovered a, a great little treasure. Okay, so that's how I do it guys. Not that hard. Just takes time. You can see the scale offset here, how it's deep in the front and then gets skinny in the back. Okay? And you can do this stuff with your Dremel. And you can make these scales any size you want. I just happen for uh, for walking sticks. This seems to be the, the perfect size for me, to me. Okay? So, now you learned how I turned my stick down on my router table. And you learned how I cut the diamond scales in there. And, of course, as you go along, you can go back and uh, clean them up. You can undercut them if you like, you know. But don't forget, you're making this edge right here. You're making this edge thinner when you undercut it. So I just like doing a straight cut on them. And then I'll come back with a, a diamond flame burr. And I'll actually sand these a little bit so they're not sharp. Because uh, when you're walking with it, they don't bite into your hand, but pulling back on it, they will. So, okay, so that's how I do it, guys. Got any questions? Leave me a comment, and I'll get right back with you. Uh, usually within the same day. Been busy, busy, busy though. So, let me get my table cleaned off here. Now that you made me make a mess on it, and uh, guess we'll throw this down. We'll take this and throw it in our other wood pile so that as we move along here if you guys want to see any uh, anything else you just let me know uh, where are we at on this walking stick all right let me show you we are doing the work on the leaves right now I am giving the leaves depth and texture so that's where we're at on the walking stick at this point okay I decided to take a break from doing the leaves in the deer to show you guys the dragon scale pattern and uh, somebody was interested on how I turned this down so it fits your hand better so this is an inch and inch and uh, I think it's an inch and a quarter stick it's a little bit big it fills my hand too much I like my I like to be able to almost touch the palm of my hand with my fingers with a walking stick. You get too big and you can't get a grip on it, right? Oh, and you're saying, probably saying, Rob, what happened to the robot monster, Rob? What happened to him? Well, I can show you guys what happened to him. That way everybody knows what he's looking like okay here he is guys robot monster he's not done quite yet but he's getting there okay he's got one two three four legs he's got one two three four arms got four arms Jordy four legs Jordy what's your monster gonna look like Jordy <laughs> in case you haven't uh, been been keeping up with this, Jordy says, uh, Rob, you're making too many monsters. Uh, my monster's going to be all your monsters. 
So, we'll see. Oh, up here on his head. We still got to put some radars on him. Some antennas. Still needs antennas. And I might round this dome over and get rid of that point. But, uh, so that's where he is, guys. Robot monster. Here's the top view. Okay. Oh, yeah, look at that. He move his arms. Not this one. That one's glued. That one's glued. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, monster. Take me to your leader. Take me to your leader. He must be terminated. Must be terminated. Must be terminated. Okay, so there he is. There's the robot monster. From planet Arachnid. They destroyed their atmosphere. They destroyed their planet. So the only way they can go out on the surface is by getting into these biomechanical suits. Inside of here, there's a four-legged, four-armed spider person from the planet Arachnid. Still in the galaxy of Calamari. They're still in, both in the same galaxy. Just two different planets. Woo! Do I see a war coming on? Do you see a war coming on? Maybe. Maybe. You never know. Between aliens. Aliens in biomechanical robot suits. Wizards. And cowboys. Who knows? Okay. So. That's all I got for you right now, guys. Remember, just carve. Carve every day. Carve something awesome. Carve something cool. Be cool. And we will talk to you later, guys. Uh, share, subscribe, and like if you want to. And we will catch you on the next one. Bye.